The Prodoa Arus has been with us for a little while now. It is one of Prodoa's better selling models and in fact, it is one of the most popular SUVs in the country, if not the most popular. But that said, as with all things, the fervour dies down after a while and even though this is still the most affordable, economical and reliable way to put seven people in an SUV, Prodoa thought maybe we should do something in 2021 to refresh it a bit and make sure that people are still talking about one of the best SUVs that money can buy. So we're here with the 2021 Prodoa Arus. We're going to talk about some of those little changes, some more little than others, and we're going to see whether or not this is still a relevant model today. My name is Ayman Ay Abdullah and this is Malaysian Motoring. Okay, so for the 2021 update of the Proto Arrows, we're going to just walk around the car very quickly because there aren't really that many things to talk about. So at the front, we still have the exact same grille, the exact same full LED headlights, by which I mean the beams are full LED, the uh, LED daytime positioning lights, or sorry, the LED positioning lights as well as the regular halogen bulb type indicators. No changes there. We've got the same bumpers, the same fog lights. This is the AV model, of course, so you get fog lights, the X models do not. Um, you get the same wheels as before, but they are now wrapped in Goodyear Assurance Triple Max tyres. This is actually a small spec change because uh, this car used to come with Bridgestone Alenzas, if I'm not mistaken, or I remember it was an Alenza, I can't remember the brand, but they've changed the tyres for whatever reason, and uh, we're still in the process of figuring out if these tyres are any way quieter or more grippy. Uh, we've only had the car for about a day now, so we'll let you know soon. Um, now, of course, the biggest change is the colour. When the Arrows was launched, it wasn't available with any sort of red, and now it is. This is passion red. Uh, not to be mistaken for any other red that Produa sells, uh, but this passion red, I have to say, makes the Arus look really good. Even though this is a design and a vehicle that a lot of us have sort of gotten used to, somehow whenever I see the red, it's just a little bit more special. And for whatever reason, we don't see a lot of this around. That could be due to the fact that we've only just come out of lockdown uh, and so production has only just resumed and so we may be able to see more of these coming soon. Now. Down the side is the same familiar profile, no changes there, absolutely nothing to talk about except for the sidestep. Now, a lot of you may be wondering why the Arus, even though it's a relatively modern SUV, requires a sidestep. The reason for this is because even though it's a modern SUV, it actually uses a very traditional sort of build setup. So you have the body on top of a ladder frame beneath. So when you have a ladder frame underneath, it makes the body a little bit taller and it raises the floor. So as a result, it actually makes the uh, floor pan a little bit higher. So there is a little bit of a step to get into a car like this. If you were to compare this to say, Prodoa's Atifa, for example, you don't have that much of a step. And so a side step actually became a very popular option or rather a very popular accessory among Arrows buyers. They would spend a decent amount of money at accessory stores in order to get a side step. Now, of course, when you buy third party, the accessory is not necessarily designed to fit with the car, it's not engineered to fit with the car. And so some degree of modification is required. We've heard some stories where side steps have required some drilling into the chassis in order for it to fit. And then when that happens, you actually compromise the vehicle and the chassis ability to withstand rust. So it's a little bit dangerous. So what Proto has decided is we'll just throw in the sidestep for free. So as a result, you no longer have to go to some dodgy store somewhere and spend 300 bucks on the sidestep that may end up ruining your car because now it's built in. Now at the back is an Arus. Like I said, there's really not many changes here. So it's just the exact same thing that we're used to. LED combination, tail lights, bulb reverse light, bulb indicator, a reverse camera down there, black garnish, some chrome, the Arus, the, the model and designation all there. And uh, boot space remains the same as with any Arus. And so with the seven seats up, you have a little amount of space, not much, but it's good for occasional use. But of course, if you put the third row seats down, you get a lot more space. However, the Arrow still does not come with any form of tonneau cover. So if you have any cargo back there, it's going to be visible either from the rear or through the rear quarter lights. In any case, let's go and sit inside where I'm going to tell you more about all the things they didn't change. 
So now inside the Pro Duo Arrows, what immediately hits you is the fact that it is exactly the same as it used to be. So you have the same dashboard architecture, the same dials, the same steering wheel, everything in here is the same exactly the way it was when the car was launched. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing because the Proto Arrows has, I'll put it this way, it's a very modern interior design. It's very good for Proto for that matter. So there is a lot of emphasis on sort of horizontal lines in order to sort of emphasize the width of the vehicle. And everything here is laid out very logically. So you have the touchscreen, uh, center control system here with your Bluetooth connectivity and even maps and all sorts of other things. You also get Prodoa Smart Link, which is Prodoa's sort of slightly janky phone mirroring system. It's not the best thing in the world, but if you desperately need to have your phone mirrored onto a screen, you can do that. You also have Prodoa's digital um, air conditioning controls, which is actually shared with the Prodoa MyV, so you just press buttons to make it do things. Uh, you also have your front parking sensors here, your central locking, uh, but more importantly, you also have this little indicator. Now, like I said, this is still standard, it's always been on the Arrows, but you, I always appreciate the fact that you have an indicator to tell you whether or not your rear seat passengers have buckled up. It saves you the hassle of having to sort of look around and yell and scream and ask your kids if they put on their seat belts because you can tell whether or not they're lying. Um, now, in front of you, you have a couple of analog dials with a little central screen in the middle. Now, the thing in the middle will tell you things like your average fuel consumption, your trip, and so on and so forth, as well as your fuel, obviously. Um, you also have a multifunction steering wheel with some controls here for the sound, and then there's, there's one button on this side for you to answer phone calls and put it back down again. And again, the interior is just very well appointed and relatively well built. One of the things that I've always really liked about the Arrows is the fact that these side air vents, even though I know that Prodoa built this car to a budget, it actually feels really high quality. There's a nice weightiness to them, which is definitely not something that you are used to expecting from a Prodoa, but I guess things have gotten better. And so the standard of cars that we can expect from Prodoa have improved enormously. Now, the air conditioning at the front, uh, the reason why I like to mention this is because this is not the only set of blowers here. So there's actually a vent up here that will blow cold air up into the air con sort of like a blower thing back here. So what it does is it actually sucks in cold air through the top and then it blows it even further through the back. Now there's actually a separate fan control back here so that actually passengers in the back can remain quite cool. This car does a very good job of keeping second and third row passengers cooler than some uh, <clears throat> D segments of an SU seven seater SUVs that I have driven. Um, so this is actually quite commendable. So now let's go and look in the back. So now in the back of the Prodoa Arus. Now I've set this seat up for my driving position and I am the national average height. And as you can see, I have plenty of knee room and plenty of headroom. Now these seats actually sit a little bit higher than the seats in front. So you can actually very comfortably see over the uh, front passengers. So even if you're sit seated back here, even as a child, for example, you'll still be able to get a very commanding view out front. This bench is also surprisingly sculpted. These outer seats have a nice little bit of sculpture here. So it actually provides a decent amount of lateral support, though the center seat does remain a bit raised and a bit flat, but that's generally the case in most cars anyway. Um, being a family car and also being a pro door, em eminently practical, there are tetarit hooks at the back of both the front seats as well as a little anti snatch theft hook next to the passenger seat. You also get a little USB port on the side of the driver's seat, again, just to aid convenience. However, it is worth noting that back here, there are no additional USB ports aside from that one on the side of the driver's seat that I mentioned earlier. And so if you have children back here and their devices are dying and they're threatening to scream at you, tough. Um, now, these back seats can actually be reclined. So there is a little lever here which will allow you to recline the back seats quite away, allowing you to get relatively comfortable. Also, they can be put back up again should you want to. And naturally, these two seats come with isofix mounts so you can easily fit a child seat here. These seats can also slide. As you can see, if I just pull this, this is the furthest forward most position. And even again, with this seat set up in my driving position, I still have a decent amount of knee room. So you can very easily get comfortable in this car, even if you're trying to give as much leg room to the people in the back. Now. I'm not going to humor you with uh, a shot of me getting into the back seats because it will be terribly undignified, but I'll put it to you like this. Those back seats 
they're okay for children and they're okay for occasional use. As an adult, I wouldn't want to be back there for any more than maybe a couple of hours because it's going to get a little bit painful. The seats sit quite low to the ground and so your knees are a little bit raised. So it's not the most comfortable position in the world. And uh, in terms of rear word amenities, you do get a 12 volt socket back there. So if you wanted to put in one of those little USB charger thingies that plug into the plug socket, you can do that and you can still be quite comfortable. The rear windows are also relatively large, although because of the rising belt line, it does mean that uh, if you have small children back there, it might be a bit difficult for them to look out, but the windows themselves are decently large, provided that you're tall enough to actually see all the way out. But this is ultimately a practical family car. And so if you have two children and you'd like to bring, say, some friends or your parents, for example, you can very easily fit this car with six or seven people and you'll be quite comfortable. And most importantly, all occupants will be protected by the Proto Aris's five-star ASEAN NCAP rating. Now, enough jabber about the interior. Let's get back in the driver's seat and let's go for a drive. So, as I said earlier, the 2021 revision to the Proto Aros is relatively minor. It's just limited to mostly aesthetic stuff, as well as the one spec change, which was the fitted tyres. So, prior to this, the Aros was fitted with uh, Bridgestone Taranza tyres, but now it's been fitted, sorry, Bridgestone Alenza tyres. Now the car is fitted with um, Goodyear Assurance Triple Max tyres. And um, the thing is, it seems like a small change, tyres really, but you have to bear in mind a couple of things. One, tyres are the car's sole contact patch with the road, so they're actually really important. Uh, and so that's why it's very important that you get good tyres for your car, because as big or as heavy or as powerful or as safe as your car might be, ultimately it's only contact with the road are those four points uh, via the tyres and the contact patch is only about the size of your palm so it's really important that that contact patch is something that's high quality that's well engineered that's designed to work well um, through the conditions that they're expected to. So swapping out the tyres, I mean I noticed that, that uh, Proto changed the tyres but when I asked them they just said oh it's, it's, just a, uh, it's just a supplier change and nothing more than that but I suspect that because Proto is one of those companies that likes to do things quietly they don't like to talk about the stuff that they get up to um, and uh, I suspect that there's actually a little bit more to it than that because even though they said that it's just a, a supply change it's actually made a rather big difference on the Proto Aros so um, I've been driving this car around for a few days now and there's noticeably less road noise than before um, and the overall package just feels a lot more cohesive with this car. I mean it's been mentioned before that the Aros is has always been a decent performer uh, both in town as well as out on the motorway but these new tyres have really helped to make it a little bit quieter and therefore a little bit more refined than before and that actually makes a big deal that makes a huge difference uh, when you're driving around uh, with family or young children in the car especially and uh, on top of that, when you're not carrying passengers and when NVH might not necessarily be your utmost priority, um, these tyres have proven themselves to be quite good performers in general. There's a decent amount of lateral grip. They do very, very well during uh, wet conditions because uh, unfortunately I had uh, the opportunity to drive this car through a very, very heavy rainstorm and I have to say the water dispersion was quite good and uh, as a result it makes the Aros feel very confident and very stable even out uh, during difficult weather conditions but of course when it is raining please slow down uh, and if you drive sensibly these tyres will do very very well. Aside from that though, the driving experience in the Aros is exactly the same as before and uh, that's certainly not a bad thing. So in town, you really appreciate the fact that you get fantastic visibility all around. You really appreciate the elevated driving position because it gives you a very commanding view out and you also have these huge door mirrors which means it's very easy for you to sort of pay attention to whatever might be in your blind spot. The blind spot itself is relatively well minimized thanks to again the shape of the mirrors themselves and uh, in terms of wind noise, there are the, the side mirrors have always been, from the, the launch in fact, have always been profiled to minimize the amount of buffeting that you get within this region. So in terms of wind noise, this car continues to perform relatively well. In terms of the powertrain though, um, the 1.5 litre engine in this produces about 105 PS and 132 Newton meters of torque via a four-speed automatic gearbox and that goes that, that sends power to the rear wheels. Now in terms of NVH from the engine, um, when you're really pushing it, you can hear the engine. I think that's an unavoidable fact uh, because you have a 1.5 litre engine powering this relatively large machine uh, and as a result, you will hear a little bit of the noise, you will hear a little bit of the engine, especially when you're trying to get up to speed. But 
Aside from that though, once you are up to speed, once you are at a cruising speed, it actually stays quite muted. Sorry, there was a very loud dispatch rider next to me. Um, but once you're up to speed, and once you've gathered enough momentum and you're at a cruising speed, it actually quietens down quite nicely. Um, admittedly, if you try and push beyond um, the Malaysian highway limit, it is going to get quite noisy um, because again you've got relatively small engine four-speed automatic gearbox and so the revs sit a little bit high but if you stay at a reasonable speed the NVH level also remains quite reasonable in terms of the ride this car is very clearly geared towards comfort and so you find that this car's primary ride does a very good job at soaking up the lumps and bumps the tires also do a very good job at uh, ironing out or at least evening out the very worst jolts that come in through the cabin and for the secondary ride it's not so bad particularly when you have some weight in the back. When you have passengers or when you have luggage or cargo in the back and weighing down the rear suspension, uh, this car does kind of settle down a little bit. When it's empty, um, the Arus does have a propensity to hop a little bit. Um, it's a little bit like driving a pickup truck in, the, in that sense because the back can hop a little bit over the very worst uh, sharp undulations and stuff like that. But for the most part, this car is quite good. And when you're driving in town, all the controls are relatively light and this car is very easy to pilot in difficult situations and because of the seating position you can get a very good view all the way around the car so it's very easy to judge where the car is out on the road or when you're parking for example speaking of which when you are parking you can benefit from this car's uh, reverse camera as well as the forward and rear uh, parking sensors as well so it helps you to kind of maneuver into a space especially tighter spaces with relative confidence and ease now the thing is, there are some people who have asked why the Arus for this year, for the 2021 update, was not updated to include um, the new 1 litre 3 cylinder engine from the Proto Atava. And the reason for that is very simple it's just the platform. This platform, I don't think, was designed to carry that engine in the first place. And I know it sounds really simple to just swap out an engine, but there's actually a lot that goes with it because a, a chassis, a modern day chassis for a car, also has to incorporate the architecture for the wide for the various uh, computer modules that live in here in order to control, for example, the safety features as well as the engine management unit and the transmission management unit. And uh, if a chassis isn't designed to work with a, specific, with a specific powertrain, there might not actually be enough space within that architecture to then house the necessary harnesses and wiring and stuff like that, and the mounting points and so on. So I suspect that it was more of an engineering challenge, uh, and that's perhaps why Prodo didn't want to take that on with this car. Besides, the Arrows is still relatively new. Um, it's not quite ready for a mid-life update just yet. Um, if anything, this was just a model year spec update, just to make some small changes like the new color, the new passion red, as well as the integrated side steps. Because aside from that, this is still the same Arrows that we know and love that was launched a few years ago and uh, is still one of Malaysia's best-selling SUVs, if not the very best out there. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, the changes to the tyres as well as the integration of the side steps as well as this new passion red colour really do help keep this car looking and feeling fresh. Um, out on the road, I know this car attracts quite a lot of attention. I think it's because this colour, as a result of lockdown as well as uh, supply chain issues and so on, I suspect that not a lot of these new red uh, Proto Aruzes have actually gone out yet uh, and so they still turn quite a few heads I must say that wherever I go there are always people always staring at the car looking at the car and thinking eh, I never knew the Aruz came in red la. Um, and uh, and I think I definitely appreciate this new colour and it still keeps it looking fresh but overall like I said still the same Aruz that we know and love if you'd like to see a more in-depth review you can check out our review of the Proto Aruz from when it was launched uh, where we were one of the first members of the media to be able to take these cars out for test drive we were very lucky for that uh, and uh, mercifully, we can see again that we remain one of the first media outlets to be able to test drive the new updated 2021 Arrows this year. Uh, in any case, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please give, a, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell icon so you're notified every time we make a new upload. Don't forget to follow us on all of our social media channels, which are all linked in the description below. And if there's anything that you'd like to know more about the Proto Arrows, please feel free to leave a comment or, in fact, come and ask us on any of our social media channels, either the Malaysian Motoring Media channels or even my media channels. I'm more than happy to field questions, especially on Twitter. Uh, and you can also follow us on Clubhouse in case you want to ask us any questions live and we're more than happy to deal with your questions there. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, take care. Jangan bodoh.